We are running out of space in Holly's house, so I am breaking down these videos to be a little bit uh, more in-depth and more digestible for you behind the scenes of how we're executing these makeovers in Holly's house to be budget-friendly but also design-friendly for the house that she is currently in. Now, with the launch of this website coming soon, I'm going to be breaking down a lot over there for you. But right now, I wanted to show you how Holly and I literally sit down, have a meeting, kind of start to talk about the vision, and then physically walk through the space to see what makes the most sense overall. Like, of course, we want to do the best of the best, but realistically, like, this isn't her forever home. She doesn't want to invest a ton of money, so we need to make it realistic. How she likes to do it, because she is a project manager by day, is she breaks it down by options seeing what is the one that she wants the most and then the one that is the most like middleman of between what is most feasible but then also kind of gets exactly what she's looking for. I don't know what's under there. In my ideal world, we would demo that and it'd be flat. So that's what I was thinking. Of like doing. I don't need that, you know? But I don't know what's under there. That's that makes me wonder like, because like, do we want to spend that much money on that much wood? No, because it's not in this house. It's but I just home. love it in a forever home. So of course I'm gonna keep them. Or maybe okay, it's it talk them. through the three things, right? Like so in one scenario, like let's go through them each one, right? You take two by fours, you're gonna tie into this wood, right? Two by fours. Two by fours. <laughs> you're gonna take a two by fours. Okay. And you go straight up, right? This is my two That's leg. exactly what I'm You're framing off of that. This is already elevated. So all you have to do either there's two options, right? We could do the same thing with this black, like that black fireplace. Paint it. Paint it. Is it a scratch though? I thought Rustalian was like life proof. <laughs> but even without that, right? Like so my, that's so what I, you just said is my no, general idea for all your my bases. My initial thought was without that, before okay. I just stood over and saw it, was if you're framing this all the way up, right? And I like the width of this because it's perfect. Like I want another teeny, teeny yeah. similar size. Right here. A little bit bigger too. A again. little bigger, but it still frames it without like taking over the wall. Now, with option one, that is going to be the more pricey one. It is also going to be the most demo build out time consuming because we are going to be doing concrete layers. So we have to consider exactly what is going to be going up there and how long it's going to take to get to that point. And this is a fully functioning house, so it's kind of nerve wracking to leave the fireplace unattended for that long with a budget that large where we want to invest in other areas. Option two is that half lit. And then it would be virtually the same, except where you don't have to do any framing above. Or I guess you would, because it, it's still- We even have to. It's even. For the ship block. But it's perfect, because it's just a build out of two by fours. I would have to demo this. Demo that, but it's basically the same. Just, just pop it off. Yeah. Well, I don't think you can just pop it off. Which I pop these little front ones off. And then it's basically, it's virtually, honestly, now just that I look it. at talking it through, it's exactly the same as the concrete one. Option two is yes, a little bit more budget friendly, but truth be told, we're a little bit nervous about what is underneath that cap at the bottom of the fireplace. And we didn't want to have to extend it or source different materials because truth be told again, uh, the materials will probably hike up because we want to find a stone for the base. Option three is most budget friendly. Yeah, minimal easy framing, easy framing. You do have a ship lap though, so that kind a of little time to assuming. Um, concrete board with a half ship lap, half concrete is a little bit time invasive because of the concrete curing. Option three is not only looking the most promising, but realistically for this house, again, since it isn't her forever home, it is looking like it will jive the most if she does go to resell. So we're leaning towards that option. Are you falling in love with that? No, I, I mean, I do yeah. love it, and it's the color floors that I love, right? Yeah. So it I know it does like, work. It's meant to be, it it too. The I love the concrete. I will have it in a house. If you guys are interested in more of a budget breakdown or a more in-depth of a budget meeting with Holly, I'm happy to film that. Just go ahead and comment down below. Today's episode would not be possible without Acorn TV inspiring me to renovate this fireplace area. 
I recently became a fan of Acorn TV, quite frankly, when they reached out to me. And once I dove in and created an account, I really couldn't stop binge watching all the shows that were available. I didn't realize how much I was obsessed with British TV and how much I was missing out on. Acorn TV is loaded with thousands of hours of binge worthy content, and there is always something new to watch popping up on the feed. Acorn TV is commercial free and available for just $5.99 a month. You can watch Acorn TV or stream Acorn TV by downloading the app or streaming it via Apple and Android devices, Amazon Fire TV, Google Chromecast, Roku, and more. In particular, the show that I am binging is The Other One. If you're a fan of quirky British comedy, The Other One is a must watch. It follows two sisters from very different worlds who had no idea that the others existed until their father drops dead. I am quickly becoming obsessed with The Other One. I cannot get enough of each episode as it passes. It is consistently playing in the background and I have become a huge fan of Acorn TV just like overnight once it was brought to my attention, quite frankly. I can't believe that I have been missing out this much on all these different series that are available on Acorn TV. And if you want to escape to Britain and beyond without leaving your seat, try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use code METS. I've left the link down below and also the code for you. That way you have easy reference. But honestly, you guys, I truly believe that you guys are going to love Acorn TV. And now it's kind of on the TV in Holly's room. It's on my computer. It's on my phone. We cannot escape it. So thank you so much, Acorn TV. A little fun fact for those of you that don't know me. I love me a good cold carb. <laughs> it is 10, 12 in the morning. I'm having a cold carb for breakfast and we're gonna get this fireplace started. Similar to every other makeover that we do together, we are going to be cleaning up and cleaning out in order to prep and properly execute what we have right in front of us. What up, sir? Holly and I decided to go ahead and keep the girth, if you will, of the fireplace that is already existing. There is no need to fix something that is not broken. So I'm going to go ahead and just chisel off the trim that is there because we're going to be laying the design over that and then extending upward to make it seem taller and larger to make this room just feel a little bit more open since the entryway is on the narrower side of things. Remember to always work with what you have. So if you have a fireplace that has an exterior that you can kind of build off of, do that because it's going to be more budget friendly. But if you have the budget to demo and reno, hello, we also love a design from the ground up, which I am dying to DIY and do with you guys. So hopefully that's in the near future. I am really excited to be implementing the budget meetings with Holly because that is realistically what we do. We kind of break down design and then budget per that and kind of execute what is realistic to the home. Since like Holly mentioned, this isn't a forever home for her. I moved forward with removing anything that was going to cause the surface to not be smooth with the design we wanted to lay over it. So that included nails, chiseling off any of the caulk that was there before. And then I also decided to remove the baseboard since I'll replace those in phases since they are very, very tedious. It is always nice to have extra tools on hand like a chisel or a hammer, pry bar, even a multi-tool when needed during demo and reno. I feel like I'm always coming across those things and just a friendly reminder to wear your safety glasses, your earbuds, and your gloves when necessary because I did have a little bit of an accident which I couldn't have avoided. It was a box cutter just slipping and nicking my hand but I just wanted to do a little bit of a friendly reminder for you guys. Off camera, um, I kind of slipped the box cutter and cut the webbing of my hand. So that's fun. As far as the mantle goes, Holly and I actually never discussed it. So it was fun to sit back when she was there after I hurt myself to discuss a little bit more of the design and to work smarter. Take off this top layer and then make that the mantle, you know? Or how thick did you want the mantle, actually? We haven't even right. discussed that. I don't, I mean, this is a fine size to me like because we can go out. over it and like do the raw wood look yeah because i'm doing that with bear so i'll cap it yeah and it'll look like raw wood yeah to me it doesn't have to cut okay out. to keep with the theme of the house we are going to move forward with the black and white and so i just picked up the basic bear ultra pure white that you can grab right off of the shelf at your big box store and i am using a flat finish because that is holly's preference i would recommend maybe a satin or an eggshell because it is easier to clean, but I'm not a fan of semi-gloss. 
Painting walls are going to vary per the color, the texture, if there's any stains to it, if there's Sharpie on it, you know, you just have to take into consideration what's in front of you. So if you have some smoke damage or maybe there is some Sharpie, you might need a stain blocking primer. I am not using that. I am using a paint and primer combo. Angela Rose is a great carpenter to head over to check out. She has a ton of incredible projects and she actually was one of the main sources of inspirations as to how I am executing this fireplace update. Yeah, you can never assume walls are equal. This is 46, it's 46 and a half. You know that saying, measure twice, cut once. Well, your girl has to measure about 5 million and 27 times to cut maybe right once. So you'll see me sitting back and measuring a ton until I get some help by my best friend, Linja, pretty soon on some projects, which I'm very excited about. Anyways, moving forward, I took those measurements and just implemented that into cutting down a basic frame on my miter saw to put up in place for the design to have something to be installed into because you can't install into thin air and we wanted it to be the same depth as the base of the fireplace that was already existing. Please make sure that when you're working with materials, you are using the proper materials to hold it together. Yes, there are different types of screws. So I am using three inch wood screws to put this frame together. I am pre-drilling some holes in certain areas just to make my life a little bit easier, but it is not necessary because it is just a basic frame and is softer wood. So it'll go right in nice and easy. I know I'm going to be getting comments like, what are you doing? What is happening? You are doing it wrong. But the only way you know how to do it is if you try. And it's really nice to be able to have the freedom to execute it with no judgment from Holly and only help and inspiration. Stuck in the stud. After we got the TV stand and the TV down, I decided to clean up that back wall prior to installing the frame and just made sure that it was good to go before making this huge change. When I saw how everything was settling, I did decide to add two more vertical supports so that way there was a total of five beams going across. I also cut down smaller 2x4 pieces to secure in between sporadically to give it a little bit of extra strength. It looks nuts, but I'm going to add some more 2x4s go in between and make some extra support for the TV. It's a little bit of a Jenga situation we got going on here. Now, because this isn't Holly's forever home and we don't need to really go crazy with the budget, I opted to try a new product. Hopefully it works. That way you guys can try it as well. It is a new floor paint by Rust-Oleum. I will link it down below for you. It is a two-part system and you can actually get it tinted over at your local Home Depot. I decided to sand down everything with an 80 grit. Now you don't have to do this if you test the paint on a specific area, but I just don't have the patience and I have the experience from before, see that tragic bathroom makeover, that this is too smooth for it to stick. It is way too slick. So by scruffing it up, it gives the paint something to adhere to. You want to make sure that that is completely cleaned up of debris, but because I needed to paint the inside of the fireplace once I realized how crusty and dusty it was, I held off real quick. I moved forward with diverting the plan just a little bit, cleaning the interior from debris, using my vacuum to suck it up as much as I could before applying this high heat paint to the interior, but not to the base of the floor and just a little bit above where um, it would be hitting the floor, like leaving a border. Depending on your surface that you are using this floor paint, you want to use the correct nap of a roller. I am using no nap. It is basically a like a legit foam paint roller for the smoothest surface available. The can does say one layer needed, but that was false in this situation. I actually think I might have to do three but I just applied a second coat a little bit later at night, six hours later per its recommendation before I let it sit overnight to see what we we're looking like in the morning. 
there are going to be a wide variety of videos coming out and I know that this is a little bit different than what I typically put out but I'm going to be breaking down makeovers a little bit more because we are almost done making over Holly's house so I want to dive into detail take a step and a breath to make sure that we are doing things properly and give you guys a little bit more of an in-depth look and to keep Callie off just put a broom right in front of it. She's terrified of the broom. All right, and before that top coat dries, it's already looking so good. But that top coat dries completely. And then, so far, so good. You literally can't see it, it's a black hole. That looks very sleek. So the next step is to let that completely cure and then we're gonna tarp it off to cover and then tackle the top. I know I should have done it backwards, but because I'm leaving for a couple of days and I can't get to the design process of this execution, I wanted to showcase this paint and show you how absolutely awesome it is. And even if you don't build up to your fireplace or onto your fireplace, this is a great way to update the exterior. So part two will be me breaking down this budget to the one that we chose. You guys can go ahead and vote if you'd like over on the YouTube community page, but part two is also going to, going to consist of the quick build out of this since we did the base work, but most importantly, the living room makeover, which I think this is going to turn into green. We want to demo that wall and then that is going to be white and getting a whole new makeover. Thank you so much to Acorn TV for sponsoring today's episode. Again, you guys, if you want to check out the other one alongside me, I'm not even kidding. It is one of my new favorite shows. And you guys want to test it out for 30 days. You can go to acorn.tv and use my promo code METS. I have linked everything down below for you and detailed it out as well. I will see you soon for another DIY.